Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart in the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. I'm so glad that you've chosen to worship with us on this first Sunday of Christmas. What a joyous and wonderful series we've had as we have celebrated together the beautiful music and message of Handel's Messiah and the prophets and the apostles as we celebrate the life of Christ. Today, as we gather, I do want to share some good news with you. We have on our pulpit a beautiful pink rose remembering the birth of a dear new child to the family of Washington Street. Janelle, Nell Cotter Parker, was born on November the 28th, 2020. She is the granddaughter of Jan Jink Cotter Jenkins, and she is the great granddaughter of Janet Cotter. Congratulations to this family, and we welcome Nell into the beautiful world at, that God has created and into this community of faith. We also want to share with you that we have had a death of a beloved member of our congregation, Mrs. Helen Carter. We're so thankful for her life and we share with Jim in remembering her with thanksgiving. For those of you who may or maybe are familiar with our church, you know that we are in a downtown community and that we have a ministry that serves the homeless population. We also remember together one of our patrons who has passed away, Rodney, and we remember him with thanksgiving and celebrate his life in the name of Christ. As we gather to worship, let us remember that even in the midst of darkness, there is light. Let us remember that God is with us. Let us worship the Lord. Let us dance with delight in the Lord and let our hearts be filled with rejoicing and our voices be lifted in praise. For eternal salvation has appeared on the earth. Hallelujah. Let us pray together. God of compassion, on this day your Holy Spirit revealed the salvation you had prepared for all peoples to the devout Simeon and Anna, who had waited until late in life. Grant that we too may adore your Son, Jesus Christ, a light to the Gentiles and the glory of Israel. 
so we may proclaim him to all your world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in our responsive reading. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord from the heights. Praise the Lord, all his angels. Praise the Lord, all his hosts. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise the Lord, all shining stars. Praise the Lord, highest heavens and all waters above the heavens. Praise the Lord.
Hear now the gospel lesson that comes from the second chapter of Luke, verses 22 through 40. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of, tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Here ends the reading of God's word. Thanks be to God. I love Christmas music, and I listen to it a lot, beginning around Thanksgiving and going into the new year. Um, it lifts my spirits and gets me in the Christmas mood. One song that has been stuck in my head for weeks is the song, Jesus, Oh, What a Wonderful Child by Mariah Carey. It's a joyful, exuberant song celebrating the birth of Jesus. Mariah sings, Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, so lowly, meek and mild. New life, new hope, new joy he brings. Won't you listen to the angels sing? Glory, glory, glory to the newborn king. As I read and studied this passage, the words to this song continued to ring in my ear. Jesus was a wonderful child. He was very special, God incarnate, a child conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He was such a wonderful child that his conception was announced by angelic messengers sent to both his mother and his father. On the night of his birth, an angel of the Lord announced it to shepherds watching over their flocks by night. And then they heard a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all. Never before and never since has the birth of a tiny baby caused so much excitement and attention. Imagine the joy that you feel when a child you care about is born, and then multiply it by probably a million. That was the level of excitement, excitement in the universe on that first Christmas morning. Even though Mary and Joseph knew Jesus was special, they really had no idea what his role on earth was going to be and what his birth really meant. How could they? They were just normal, devout Jewish people living in Nazareth. They had no way of knowing about the eternal implications brought about by this extraordinary birth. 
So they were surprised by the acclaim and attention their son received when they took him to the temple that day. They were just doing what any faithful Jewish parents would do. They took their child to present him to the Lord. But at the temple they met two devout people, Simeon and Anna, who gave them a little more insight into their wonderful child. These two strangers, whose eyes were opened by the Holy Spirit, could see that this unassuming child would do great things with eternal implications. Luke tells us that Simeon was righteous and devout and that the Holy Spirit rested on him. The Spirit had promised him that he would see the Lord's Messiah before he died. And that day, the Holy Spirit guided him to the temple and straight to Jesus. When Simeon saw Jesus, he took that baby in his arms and praised God for sending the Messiah as a Savior for all people. With this pronouncement, he gave Mary and Joseph an inkling of just how wonderful, how special Jesus was. Simeon announced that Jesus was the key to salvation, not just for the people of Israel, but for the Gentiles also. That means that Jesus was the key to salvation for the entire world. That's earth-shaking news. This pronouncement showed that Jesus would bring new life, new hope, and new joy to the world. Unfortunately, it's also the kind of news that would not please everyone, particularly those in power. So Simeon went on to tell Mary some hard news about Jesus. This wonderful child would challenge existing power structures and cause people to oppose him. Think how difficult it must have been for Mary to hear this prophecy about her eight-day-old child. On that day in the temple in the second week of his life, Mary heard that through his life and actions, Jesus would show people a way of life that was so different from the norm that people would oppose him, that his life, while special, would not be easy. As Mary and Joseph were trying to understand Simeon's words, they got another prediction about Jesus' future. Anna, the pro a prophet, saw the baby Jesus and announced that he would provide for the redemption of Jerusalem. And she, like Simeon, praised God for this wonderful child. Now, it doesn't say it specifically in Scripture, but some commentators imagine that Simeon and Anna sang over Jesus, voicing their praise through song. And I really like that picture. When I praise God, my heart is so full of emotion and thankfulness that sometimes I sing just because I'm thankful. Does that happen with you? I know Christmas is one of those times when my praises turn into song more often than not because Christmas carols are some of my favorite songs. As I think about the wonderful, extraordinary things God has done, is doing, and will do, I can't help but sing. At this time of the year, as we celebrate Christmas and the incarnation of God, it's just natural to lift our voices in song as we sing, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing. So I like to think that both Simeon and Anna were singing praises over this wonderful child, this tiny baby who was God incarnate, the redemption of Israel, the salvation of the world. They could see with spirit-opened eyes what Jesus would do for all of us. He was bringing new life, new hope, and new joy. Because they could see what was extraordinary about Jesus, they knew that this, long, this little baby was the long-awaited Messiah, the Savior of the world. Now, it's by, beyond my comprehension why God would be willing to become so vulnerable in the form of a baby. But that just shows us the extent 
of divine love. The birth of Jesus the Christ shows us to what lengths God is willing to go to connect with us. Martin Luther said, God became small for us in Christ. He showed his heart so that our hearts might be one. God came down to us not to outmuscle the world, but to coax us into being tender, loving, soft, even vulnerable. Simeon and Anna, through the Holy Spirit, could see that Jesus' birth was the beginning of a new order. They saw that with this child, God was doing a new thing that would shake the foundations of the world and upset the powers that be. They recognized and affirmed that Jesus was God's agent of redemption. Being hope-filled and joyous about the birth of Jesus Christ isn't just something for the past, though. It should fill us with joy even today, um, so many centuries later, because the birth of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, means that whatever our present circumstances, no matter how dark they may be, they can't diminish or eradicate God's hope because Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Because love came down at Christmas in the form of a tiny baby, we can have hope today. We can hope that the pandemic will end soon and enough people will get vaccinated, that we will go back, be able to go back to life that some semblance of the life we had prior to the beginning of the pandemic. We can hope that when our loved ones die, they are welcomed into the arms of a God who loves us so much, God became one of us. We can have hope because of the new life, new hope, new joy Jesus Christ brings. Then we can lift our voices and sing with the angels, glory, glory, glory to the newborn king. Thanks be to God. knowing that we have new life, new hope, and new joy because of the birth of Jesus Christ. Glory, hallelujah. Amen and amen. <laughs>